recap what was just explained. During the heating season, conduction is the primary method for which heat is transferred from a home's interior to the outside, and the process reverses during the cooling season, with radiation being the main driver. But notice that convection is at work in both scenarios. If we can cut down convection's piece of the pie, we can dramatically increase human comfort and reduce energy bills. Now let's take a closer look at how our value and U factors are calculated so that we can begin our experiment. As Dan said in his comments, U factors have other units associated with them, such as area, time, temperature, wattage in the case of electricity, therms in the case of gas, and BTUs. Here is the formula that allows us to calculate our values in U factors. Let's define the terms of our formula for calculating U factors. First, BTUs per hour. Now we know that one BTU is about the same amount of heat that a wooden kitchen match produces when it's burned. And we know that one watt of energy produces 3.413 BTUs of heat per hour. So if we know the wattage of our heat source, we can calculate the number of BTUs being produced. Then there's the area and square feet of the material that we're testing, and finally the temperature difference on each side of the material. Knowing that, we can calculate delta T, put it all together in the UA formula, and we can calculate U factor and R value of a particular material. Let's take a look at our experiment and see how this relates. All right, I'm here with uh, Dan Cote uh, once again, and we are going to show you a simple little experiment that you can do with your students to help them understand R value and U value, specifically how we calculate R value and U value. Um, it is done with a foam box that's uh, very easy to buy a, a sheet of a four, four by eight sheet of foam. You can get three of these boxes out of one of those sheets. And I'll let you hold that, Dan, and I will try to put this together. All right, so we have a bottom and two sides and a front and a back and a lid. And we're simply going to tape this together with this aluminum duct tape and we're going to make sure that we really seal it up well. We want to seal up all of, the, all of the joints so that we don't have any air leaks. And then what we're going to do is put a light source in here. We're going to put a drop light in. And it has a 40 watt bulb in it. And we're going to let it heat up until it reaches equilibrium. Meaning that it's going to get to a temperature where it can't rise any higher. And we will end up getting a delta T, which means we will have a temperature inside the box and a temperature outside the box, and we will subtract the lower temperature from the higher temperature, and that'll give us delta T. That'll give us the difference in temperature. All right, and we are also going to put this thermocouple uh, in the box. We have what a thermocouple is. It's a reads temperatures at, uh, and it get, reads two different temperatures, one inside the box and one outside the box. So that allows us to measure what the actual delta T is. So we'll use that. And then the other thing we're going to do that this isn't actually uh, essential for doing the experiment, but it's, it's kind of cool. It's a watts up meter, W-A-T-T-S, watts up meter. And essentially what we do is we'll plug this into the wall, we'll plug our light source into the watts up meter, and it will actually tell us what the, uh, the wattage is of the lamp that we're using. So if it said it was 40 watts, we'll actually be able to tell whether it actually is 40 watts or not. And then we are going to do the calculations, the UA calculations, and figure out what the R value is of this box, this box as an assembly. And then we're going to cut a hole in it, in the bottom, and we're going to cut a hole in the top, and we're going to see if we can get a stream of air going through the box, uh, through the, the bottom hole and then coming out through the top, uh, as an example of the heat stack effect. So, let's get started. All right, so Dan and I are, are here with uh, our box all assembled and put together. We have our heat source, which is the light bulb, 40 watt bulb. 
uh, our watts up meter is telling us that it actually is putting out 40.3 watts right now. We have our thermocouple here uh, with one probe inside the box, one probe outside the box, about 154 degrees inside the box and in this room it's 64.2 degrees. So we have the delta T calculations now. We can do that subtraction. We can find the difference of temperature inside the box to outside the box. And we can plug all of this information into our formula. So here's how we determine the R value of our rigid foam box. Remember that R value is the reciprocal of the U factor. So we can easily exchange the terms of our UA formula to calculate either. Since we're looking for the R value, let's use area times delta T divided by the product of our BTUs per watt per hour times the actual number of watts. Now for the area, we measure the inside perimeter of the box times the inside height plus the area of the bottom and the area of the top. Add it all together, it equaled 7.167 square feet. Don't forget to have your students convert square inches into square feet. Then we allowed the heat source to continue heating, and I mentioned this because in our prior film clip we showed 154 degrees. We, we let it go for a little bit longer, and it reached an equilibrium of 164 degrees. The room temperature was 64.2, giving us a delta T of 99.8 degrees. Our BTU factor of 3.413 was multiplied by 40.3, the wattage output of our lamp, equaling 137.54. Put together in the formula, we got 5.2 as our R value. Now we know that the actual R value is 5 because it's labeled on the insulation, but we also know that our test is not the same rigorously controlled one done by the manufacturer. We demonstrated what happens with conductive heat loss, but we didn't talk about convective heat convective. loss, which is air leakage. So we're going to simulate some air leakage in this building. Um, right. Our box inside temperature is now up to 164 degrees, and we're going to see what happens when we create an air leak. So we've got a little hole in our attic where uh, Somebody installed one of those nice recess cans, um, but it wasn't airtight. And we've probably got some holes around the bottom of our home where we have uh, utilities coming in and things like that. So this is a, just a smoke generator, and all we do is um, get it warmed up, and we can watch the air leakage that's being drawn in through the stack effect, essentially. And you can see how, essentially, we have air moving through our assembly because of the warmer indoor temperature and the colder outdoor temperature and that air is drawn in through the assembly and then exits through the top of the assembly. So that is creating air leakage. Um, while we have that air leakage taking place, um, we're also starting to see the temperature inside our home decrease. So the air movement through the home is taking that warm air that we heated and it's exiting the building and we're losing heat energy because of convection. We still have the same insulation. Insulation hasn't changed. So we're losing energy even though we insulated. That's the point of remembering about con convection. And the temperature was at 164, I believe. Right, so we've already lost almost 10 degrees just by this little hole here and this little hole here. And it, it would be interesting to see what happens if I close this hole up. All right, so Spencer has access to the hole in the attic and he seals it up. Now notice how much of the smoke is not actually even entering the building just by sealing one of the major air leaks at the top of the building. And this is demonstrating why when we instruct people to do air sealing, we tell them to focus at the higher part of the building first. It's the best bang for the buck. Now after cutting the holes in the box, give it about another 10 minutes and then have your students get a new delta T and recalculate the R value of the insulation. In our experiment, after less than a minute, 
we went from R5.2 to R4.67. The insulation is still R5, but because of air leaks, it is performing at less than its rating. I hope this will help your students understand the relationship between R value and U factors, conduction and convection, and most importantly, help them understand how insulation without air sealing is ineffective. I have placed this video on my website at www.pcc.edu forward slash staff forward slash S Henkel. Click on the NKBA heat transfer label for this video and other resources to help you make it real.